So we've set up linting and testing in our previous videos for our continuous integration tasks, but there's one more thing that you'll see in a lot of CI setups, and that's a build script. Until this point, we haven't needed it because our code just runs natively in Node. But in many, many projects, I'd probably say the majority of projects, you're going to see that you're going to need some sort of bundler or build or something like that. So we're going to quickly set up Webpack in this project since it's such a common bundler, and then we're going to add its accompanying CI task. Even if you're not familiar with Webpack, you can, of course, follow along, but I will link to uh, some videos that I have in the notifications about uh, the understanding the basics of Webpack that I previously made. And you could also use your bundler of choice substituting Webpack if you like. So let's start by adding the packages we need real quick here. So over in the terminal, uh, I'm just going to use npm i-d for a dev dependency. Since this is sort of a build thing, it's not something that our actual production code is going to need. It's going to build the production code. So we'll add uh, Webpack and Webpack CLI first. And then I might as well add, uh, we'll do the same command, but we'll this time we'll do at uh, Babel slash core and at Babel slash preset env pretty standard setup just so we can do some transpiling and we'll also need Babel loader now for this simple of a project I actually don't need uh, any Babel Babel whatever you want to pronounce it but I am going to need it for my jest tests because they won't be able to run uh, you know ESM code natively without referencing that Babel RC so then we'll just jump back over to our code real quick. And uh, I'm going to add, oops, I'm gonna add a file here in the root and we'll call this.babelrc on the left there. And then what I'll do is, uh, this is JSON, so I gotta put quotes around it. And then you just wanna do your presets. And then this is just your standard at uh, babel slash preset env. So that's to set that up. And then I'll also create a uh, webpack file in the root here. So we'll do a webpack config.js and to save time I'll just paste this in and that's it's that simple uh, you know webpack's got some presets already of where it looks for directories and stuff that you don't need to set so we're only going to add this loader right here to run uh, Babel as we digest JavaScript couldn't think of the right words so in order to do that we're actually going to want to put everything in a source folder since that's the default for webpack so this uh, attack.js which is our main function we're going to put in there. Why did that not work? So move that in there. We're going to need this attack test since it's a relative to it. And then of course our index file. Now to get this working, I'm going to go over to our package JSON here, and then I'm going to add a script for development and production builds. So first we'll start with our standard develop script. It's just a pretty common name for it. Uh, this is going to be webpack and then i'm going to set the mode in webpack to development and that's just so that it doesn't minify all of our stuff so we can see the actual development code and it's a little bit easier to find errors and such and then here i'm going to do a build which is what we're actually going to be adding to our continuous integration setup this one's going to be webpack and we're going to set mode equal to production which is actually the default but you will get a warning if you don't set it so you might as well now, if you're thinking ahead here, you might be wondering why I'm not doing a sort of CI build or CI webpack or some sort of name like that, since that's what I've stuck to my other ones. There's two reasons for this. The first one is because it's a really common convention to have a build script. It's what people are going to be looking for commonly in your project to build your production code. The other reason is that it's not just for continuous integration. It's also actually used to build your code and deploy your code which you could definitely consider part of your continuous, continuous integration if that is what your setup is. But that's the basic logic for it to me. Mostly it's because it's more recognizable. So let's run one of these scripts here and see if they actually work. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with build, npm run build. And you can see that runs just fine, right? And if we come back over to here, it's created this dist folder with a main JS and here's our minified code. So due to that, that wasn't an error. That was just a linting thing. Due to that dist being created, we actually don't want that to go up to our repo. So we're just gonna really quickly add dist to the git ignore because we don't wanna be committing that code. We wanna generate it every time on our actual like production server or whatever which we're working toward. And I think this is a pretty good commit point. So let's start here. Let's add all of these files. And then we'll say add webpack and babel. 
Okay, now before we make our CI script, what we want to do is we actually want this to generate out something useful here. Uh, we're gonna switch, I should say, uh, useful for Webpack to actually be doing something here. We're gonna switch all of these uh, require statements, this common JS, to be ESM. So we're gonna change this to an import. We're gonna go over to here, delete that paren from. And so now we're importing from there. We'll test this out in a minute. Um, then if we open our attack script, we're gonna do the same thing, but in this case, it's kind of reversed. We're just gonna say export default attack. And then for our test, same thing here, import from, oops. And that should all be them converted. Let's do a quick uh, test to see that our, we'll do an actual test, but we're gonna do a, a build We'll do the run develop since I didn't do that one before, just to see that that one builds fine. It doesn't, I'm just looking for it to not throw errors right now. And then also let's run our NPMT. Oops, NPMT. And I'll, you know, press A just to make sure it runs all the tests and it did and they all pass, great. So if we didn't have Babel set up, Jess would actually get upset right here with this ESM syntax change, just so you know. Now we can go back to our main and we can see I just ran develop. So that's why it's not minified. It's just this long form version of that. Everything's working fine. Cool. So now to our CI script, and this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to add another line here and you could do this in different orders if you want. Like maybe the build is more important to you. Typically for me, the linting is going to be like the easiest thing to do a quick catch for. So I'd like to have that as one of the first steps right here. After I've installed my packages, of course, and then probably tests but it's up to you. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna add a name here because I just like to add my own names. We'll say bundle and output. I could put like Webpack or something, but I'll keep it generic in case I swap it. And I'll do npm run build. So let's commit and push this up and see if it runs successfully. So add this, let's say add CI task for build script. I'm gonna push that up to the repo. First, I'm gonna check and see that that actually kicked off. Yep, here it is. You can see it running. So while that's going, let me give a quick little insight on something that you might commonly see and wonder about. So a lot of times in these GitHub action setups, you'll really commonly see something like this where they do dash dash if dash present. Oops. That might seem like it's some sort of CI specific thing, uh, but it's actually an NPM thing. It's just a lot of us really aren't familiar with it because you don't commonly run it unless you're in a continuous integration setup or something like that, or you're using generic scripts. Let me show you how that works. So when you do NPM run build, obviously it runs successfully or it doesn't because it has a problem. But let's say I do NPM run chicken. That script doesn't exist. And so if you try to run it, of course, it's going to throw an error, as you can see. But if you did npm run chicken dash dash if dash present, it'll fail gracefully, even when it doesn't work. So a lot of times, if you have these kind of pre-built, reusable, uh, continuous integration setups or GitHub action things that you're copy pasting, they'll have that if present, because not everything has a build, as our project didn't until this point. So it's just basically to say it'll just fizzle and not do anything if it, that build command doesn't exist. So you can just paste this around. So that's the gist of how it works. And we don't want to do that. I usually don't because this is pretty specific and I know that I have a build command. So I'm not going to add that. Come back to our actions here and you can see that everything ran successfully. And then we have all these nice clean like steps. And I, I, that's why I really like naming this. It just is a little bit more readable to me to just kind of read each of the steps that's going on. And you can see after we run tests, we bundle an output and that was successful. It ran webpack dash dash mode production. So as usual, before rounding this video off, let's make sure that it can fail. because That's a pretty important part. We don't want a false positive here. So let's go back to our code. And the thing is, if I changed the attack function, that would actually fail at a previous step because let's say I just added a typo here, for example, that that would cause an error for sure, but um, my test would fail, my linting would fail, and it wouldn't ever get to the build step that we wanna test. So I'm not going to change that at all. Close that and don't save. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna change the Webpack config because that's not touched by the tests or any of the other stuff. So I'm going to just change this to Babe Loader 
instead of Babel loader. And then I'll do npm run build. And you could see that we get an error locally. And so I'm going to push that up. So let's say CI testing purposeful failure. Probably should have put that it's for build, but too late. Not really. I could rewrite history, but I'm not going to do that. I'll come back to our actions here. Go into this. So this is our latest action. And we should see a failure if we did it right. No, and that will let us know that, uh, you know, if someone were to ever make a mistake and mess up our build in some way, mess up our webpack config, or mess up something else that we just didn't quite have a test for, that we would still catch that before we deploy. And here you go, we did. So a bundle output failed. We got exactly what we expected. Beautiful. And as usual, you know, if we were to put this into a PR, it would show up in the PR. And if we had our settings like we did in a previous video where we don't allow PRs to be merged pull requests, uh, unless, not unless, if they have a error, we don't allow them to be merged. Sorry, that was hard to say. So we're essentially blocking, you know, anything that doesn't pass from being merged. All of these steps have to all pass okay, or else you cannot go into our main branch, which eventually we're going to be setting up a continuous integration setup to automatically deploy to our server as well. And if it wasn't super clear, you know, like why do we need this? Because, you know, we already have tests and such like that that would fail ahead of time. You know, this would have to be very specific to a Webpack config. It actually is going to catch a lot of things, I assure you. This is one of the more important scripts for you that will save you a lot of headache because a lot of times your builds will take a while to run. And if you don't have this step, you basically are waiting till it gets on the server. And even if you have something, you know, preventing it, of course, from deploying to your actual server, if not, then you're really in trouble. But, you know, your production server might not deploy it if it has a failure, but it's still going to take a long time to get to that point. And so you've written a bunch of code and you've gone through the process of merging it and deploying it. And then you're waiting and then all of a sudden you see a failure and, you know, you're 15 minutes later or even longer. And you could have just skipped all of that time by just having the step here on each of your pushes or at least on your pull request. So you get to fail early, essentially, which is a really good common practice. Of course, you could just run, you know, your build setup every single time before you push, but we're humans. So let's be honest, we're not going to remember to do that. It's better to let the machines remember to do that. So let's fix this and then call it good here. So I'll go back to where I was. Now I'm just going to put that back. Fix CI bug for build script. And so this commit and all of these are for the purpose of showing you, uh, in case you want to look at the repo and see the history and follow along, you of course can look at the commits that way. I'll have this repo in the description, but that about wraps up this video. Pretty straightforward, huh? So if there are things that your tests don't catch that your code also could fail on, which I assure you will be more and more true the larger that your project scales, you should have a build step in your continuous integration to check early on uh, if your build even works correctly. And I typically put it at the end of my steps. And with that, we'll call this a wrap and I'll see you over on the next video.